Oh, okay. So we are going to start today. We're switching to lesson 3.3. We're going to do this today as well as next week. So there's not going to be homework today. Uh, long weekend, so there's no reason to have homework. What we're doing is we're going from standard and slope intercept form to graphing. So today we're going to focus on slope intercept form. Um, and then next week we'll go from standard. We have to go from standard form to slope intercept form. That's where your solving for y comes in. And then graphing. So that nothing's going to change with graphing next week. It's just getting to slope intercept form. So what we're talking about is graphing. Okay, so we are going to be graphing linear equations. Okay, now linear equation does not contain variables with exponents other than one. So we are not talking about graphing anything like x squared, x cubed, anything like that. So we're only a talking about x's. So yes, we can graph x's. No, we can't graph x squareds x cubed, square root of x, 1 over x. These are all things that we cannot graph. So right now, we're only talking about x's. The graph of a linear equation is always a straight line. Okay, and I know it sounds kind of quirky, but if you think of linear equation, what are the first four letters of linear? Line. So whenever you see linear, we're talking about a straight line. Okay, that's the big difference. So now we will graph x squareds later this year, but for the most part, all those other things are going to be things you'll do in algebra two. So not necessarily in here. Okay, so look at these ones down here. Can we graph these as linear functions? Look at number one. We can't do it because of that right there. So this is nope. Can't do that. What about number two? Nope, x squareds. Can't do that. What about three? Hmm. Can we? There's only x, right? Oh. X can't be on the bottom. X can be, that's just one, ele one over 11 times x. So yes, we can do that. What about four? Yes. Mm-hmm, just x. Five, no, because nope, that x cubed. And then six, yes, because that's just going to be. Okay, so anytime you see x squared, x cubed, square root of x, one over x, and those, we cannot do that. Okay, so the key for today is the slope intercept form. Who remembers what the slope intercept form is? Cuba? And that's the slope formula. What's slope intercept form? Right, so y equals mx plus b. Okay, hopefully that's something you remember from some previous years. Okay, and it's going to be beneficial when we are graphing equations. Okay, so y equals mx plus b. But let's remind ourselves, what does the b stand for and y equals mx plus b? Uh, I heard two things. What would you say? Base. Base, and what would you say? Y right, so y-intercept. You're, right, you're thinking of area or the big B. So this will be y-intercept. Okay, and that's just basically where it crosses the y-axis. What does the M stand for? Um, slope. Slope. Okay, now I know it's going to, I, once again, I'm, I'm going to be picky on this. But if I wrote it was this and I said y equals 3x plus 4, what's my slope of that equation? It's 3. Okay, sometimes people will say 3x. That's not the slope. It's just the coefficient. So the slope is 3. Don't say the slope is 3x because that's not the, totally correct. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is... In my opinion, once you see how to graph this, it's actually pretty easy, and then you're going to be able to do it really fast and to be able to do it across all different problems. And then there's four steps to do it. And if you do these four steps, typically what I'm finding is everyone's like, okay, this is pretty easy. The first thing is the equation must be in slope-intercept form. Okay, so we have to convert it to this. Now, today, everything we're going to be doing is already in slope-intercept form. 
That's going to change on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. So today we don't have to worry about it. Okay, you're going to identify the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, so the slope and the y-intercept. You're going to figure out what they are based off the equation. The starting point is always, 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 always the y-intercept. And you'll hear me say this all year. Okay, we always start with the y-intercept. Okay, and then I know this sounds obvious, but I just want to state it. Okay, the y-intercept is on the y-axis. Okay, sometimes we have a tendency to put the y-intercept on the x-axis, and that totally messes up the problem. From there, we're going to use the rise over the run. And you'll see what I mean by that. So we're going to basically, you're going to start at the y-intercept. Then you're going to use the slope, but we're going to use rise over run. So if you remember, I've been saying for the last couple weeks, keep your slope as a fraction. This is y. You're going to see how a lot easier it is to do it today versus having a, a decimal. Okay, so we are going to switch over to the extra paper. We're going to switch over to this one for learning. Okay, the notes have it, are, you can see they don't have really clearly copied uh, grids. So it's a little, I, I, for, for discussion and learning, I want to do it on this where it's very easy to see the grid. Okay, so what we're working with, here's our equation. So it's already in slope intercept form. Okay, so Levi, what's my y-intercept for this first equation? Right, so negative 1 is going to be my y-intercept. Okay, and then uh, Palin, what is my slope? Um, negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. So remember, that's my rise over my run. So a rise of 1 and a run of 2. So you're, what you're going to do is you're always going to go to your y-intercept. So negative 1 is my y-intercept. I'm just going to put a dot right there. Now remember, negative slopes. Negative slope, that means it's going down as I go left to right. If it's positive, it's going up as I go left to right. So you're going to start at your y-intercept, and I'm going to go down 1 and then over 2. That's my rise over my run. And I'm just going to put another dot. I'm going to go down, do it again, down one, over two. That's my rise over run. There's my three dots. There's my line. I'm all done. That is that, that line. Okay. So your y-intercept gives you one dot. You're going to use rise over run to create at least one, preferably two more dots. And then if you're just going to go back to elementary school, and we're going to play connect the dots. <coughs> Okay, so that's, the key with this is the negative one-half is rise over run. So that's how you're going to use your slope. It's going to tell you where to go compared to your y-intercept. Okay, so let's look at number two. Number two, I'm already in slope-intercept form. Okay, so Tessa, what is my y-intercept? Negative 1, right? So go ahead and put a dot at negative 1. Now, what's my slope? Mr. Jones, what's my slope? 4, but now what's, what's underneath that 4 that we don't write? 1, okay? So this is your rise over run. So when you see just a number, there's a 1. So that means you rise up 4 and you run one. So whenever you see a whole number, there's a one underneath that. So because it's positive, I know it's gonna be going up as I go left to right, so I'm gonna go up four. One, two, three, four, right one. One, two, three, four, right one. You can also go down four if you want. One, two, three, four, go left. One, two, three, four. Okay, you don't need to put that many dots. I'm just showing you. You can go different ways. And then it's going to be a straight line directly through those dots. OK, 
Okay, any questions on those two? Hopefully you're seeing what we're doing. Okay, let's look at number three. Okay, this is my equation. So, Jadarius, what's my uh, y-intercept? Negative 2. Okay, right there. So, I'll go down and put a dot. Caleb, what's my slope? Negative 1 over 3. So, remember, now it's going to be going down as I go left to right. So, my rise is 1, my run is 3. So, I'm going to go down 1, which is negative. I'm going to have to go positive, so it's by to my right. 1, 2, 3. Down one, one, two, three. So it would look like this. I remember right now, I mean, my lines aren't perfectly straight, so we're not, I'm not grading you on the perfection of your straight line as much as I am on the dots and then connecting them. Okay. Questions. Okay, so let's try. Why don't you guys try doing four and five? Okay, and then we'll check it. And for those that are get ahead, if you're on the back, I know the number seven and number eight are the exact same thing. I just totally messed up when I created this assignment. So you don't need to. We're just going to cross off number eight. Okay, so work on four and five. I'll walk around and then we'll check these and then we'll get into we'll wrap up these this part of the notes.